and welcome to the ARM Software Developer Breakdown. My name is Robert Wolf, and in today's video, we're going to be meeting with Alex Chalkius, Product Manager, and Reese Davies, Developer Advocate from Canonical. So let's meet them. All right, so here we are with Reese and Alex. Very nice to meet you, and thank you for joining us on the ARM Software Developer Breakdown. Uh, let's get to know you a little bit. So, Reese, if you wouldn't mind just telling us a little bit about yourself. All right, thanks. Thanks for having us, Robert. Uh, so, I'm, my name is Reese Davis. I'm a, a developer advocate over at Canonical. I look after general sort of Ubuntu advocacy and Snaps and Snapcraft specifically. Alex? Thanks, Reese. Uh, hi, Robert. Thanks for having us. Uh, I'm Alex Chalkias, product manager at Canonical for everything Kubernetes. Uh, I also work uh, with uh, other data center related products and ensuring that uh, everything fits together in the big picture. All right, so very nice to get to know both of you. Thank you for taking the time and you know spending it with us here today for this video. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about Ubuntu, but before we do that, let's get to know Canonical. So if you could please, real quick, Alex, tell us a little bit about Canonical. Sure thing. So everybody knows us as the company behind Ubuntu, but Ubuntu is not the only thing we do at Canonical. Uh, it is a platform on top of which we build uh, our technology stack uh, with the aim to simplify development and operations from cloud to edge. And everything we do, we do so that it works on ARM because we consider it a first class citizen. All right, so yeah, thank you, Alex. Uh, appreciate that. And uh, very cool to hear actually, you know, that Canonical considers ARM to be a first-class citizen. In fact, you know, I noticed personally, Ubuntu pretty much just runs on almost every ARM device that I own, as you can tell, many. Um, so uh, I'm excited to hear more about Ubuntu. So maybe, uh, Reese, could you just tell us a little bit about, more about that? Certainly. So Ubuntu is the most popular Linux operating system out there because of its ease of use and, and its community, I think, uh, especially among developers. Uh, and, and contributors out there. We had a lot of feedback and contributions from developers and various different sort of IT communities. Um, as such, we sort of see the rise and trends of what's popular and, and get behind and support those kind of projects. So that's what Ubuntu is, but on a sort of higher level, it's it's much more of a platform. It's, it's a place, it's a technology where people learn new technologies, where people can experience open source. You'll see us, as Alex mentioned, in lots of different places. You'll see us in containers, in containerization, in virtualization, in the cloud, and like all of the devices behind you on uh, IoT devices, all with support for, um, for ARM. Uh, awesome, Reese. Yeah, so I noticed some very heavy hitters, uh, some some heavy hitters in that slide you just had up there. Uh, I'm kind of curious. Those are mostly desktop folks. So, um, could you tell us a little bit about you know what what, do, what are you guys doing with with all these companies up there? Certainly. So, uh, what we're here for uh, is Ubuntu, but what most people have heard about is the Ubuntu desktop, uh, where we work with hardware manufacturers like the ones you see here with Lenovo, Dell, and HP to make sure Ubuntu is a first class citizen on their hardware as well, especially on high, high end engineering and developer products such as workstations for AI, ML, uh, data science, and sort of high, com high performance computing. But we also work with the folks over at Microsoft on things like uh, WSL to give Windows developers that little bit of escapism to get to Ubuntu. Uh, and again, we're committing to doing this kind of thing on ARM hardware specifically as well. Our latest release of Ubuntu, Ubuntu 2010, came with an ARM uh, desktop image specifically for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and we're, we're ready to do more ARM compute uh, when, it, when, when, these, when more hardware comes around, right? Uh, but as well as the Ubuntu desktop, there are things folks might not know that we do uh, also on ARM. So to add to what Reese just said, uh, let me try to paint this picture for you. This is what we call the full compute continuum. So places where you can find computing power from public cloud to private cloud, micro clouds, and the internet of things. Canonical has products that work across the, that entire spectrum. Each of these domains has its own key ingredients and complexity, but we try to really remove the friction with uh, our products. And of course, we, we test our products for compatibility across all the different hardware, and ARM is, is one of the major partners that we have. Like, I, I really like how you broke down this with, with a full compute continuum. I've never heard that before. Um, addressing all of these different segments. Can we dive a little deeper into that and what Canonical does in each one of these spaces? Perfect. So we start from the public clouds where Ubuntu is the most popular cloud operating system across the entire spectrum of public clouds. So we have partnered with Microsoft, AWS, Google, 
Oracle, and so on and so forth, to ensure that we provide them with optimized Ubuntu images uh, to enable people to get the most from their choices. Uh, we're actually working with, with the two public clouds that already have uh, ARM offerings too. So on Amazon Gravitons and on Oracle's Ampere ARM chips, Ubuntu has optimized images for their users. When the other public clouds will find their way with ARM hardware, will be there for them too. And then for private clouds, we have an entire technology stack, as I said, aiming to remove operational friction on all layers of the data center from bare metal to applications. So starting from top to bottom, MASS provides with bare metal provisioning. So you can get like your entire bare metal infrastructure uh, provisioned. We have on the virtual side, an OpenStack distribution and a Ceph distribution. So if you need virtual machines and storage, that's where you would find these. And then on the container side, we have two, con uh, two Kubernetes distributions, chunk Kubernetes and microgates, the former being like uh, everything you need, composable Kubernetes and microgates being a more developer friendly, but also pro production grade sort of streamlined Kubernetes, super easy. And then for application and management capabilities, we provide with Juju that allows for lifecycle operation automation. And it really works well with, with all the layers below. All these offerings are designed to be architecture agnostic, therefore arm friendly. I've never heard of the term micro cloud before. This is kind of new to me. So I'm kind of curious, is this something that, you know, just Canonical focuses on? And then also um, there's no edge here. So how would Canonical define the edge space, which most people refer to, you know, in, in, in our line of work? That's a really great question. Robert, actually, we feel that edge as a term can be really confusing because there's a different definition for edge in all different sorts of companies. Like you have the telco edge, you have like uh, edge for industrial. So how far from the data center is your edge uh, is what confuses people in order to sort of try to bring the business requirements into their, their IT choices. So what we do here at Canonical is that we're trying to redefine the meaning of edge computing into helping people think of two different classes of compute. So on the one hand, we have micro clouds, and on the other hand, we have the internet of things. And these are really, if you think about it, two different classes of compute that have different characteristics and drive different business requirements. So micro clouds are really anything between three to 20 servers that inherit most of the characteristics of a standard private cloud, but are deployed at scale in remote locations. So they're difficult to operate. They bring different challenges than a private cloud, but Canonical, we offer like a full technology stack to address the needs of these micro clouds. So we talked about all these layers before. Essentially what you have here is a full technology stack to do from bare metal provisioning to VM and container orchestration and storage. And if you, want to learn more about this, uh, you can watch our demo in an upcoming video. Again, all these layers work with ARM. And of course, then you have the other broad term that we have on the slide here, the Internet of Things, where we at Canonical have had our eye for a while, where Ubuntu uh, has been putting pushing some technologies for a little while to make sure that, that we're here too and that we can support uh, all of the devices and Internet of Things projects that are going out there. They're really three main areas that we look at for IoT, and that's firstly SNAPS, which is our application tech, application container technology that's designed for IoT use cases to address the needs for things like isolation and security, uh, but can be used on your desktop too to bring the same benefits to your workstation with the, with the global SNAP store and, and SNAPcraft, so to bring Linux applications there. Uh, and then you also have Ubuntu Core, which is built of snaps to be secure. It's a version of Ubuntu uh, built with that level of security and crucially updatability that IoT really demands. Um, it's what we say, we, it's what we recommend as the production version of Ubuntu for Internet of Things devices, where we want people to be developing as much as they can on their desktop or on their servers and then deploying with Ubuntu Core. And all of these things, for us, our approach is user security first. So application updates and long-term support come with, with everything that we put into IoT. We want to make sure that not only do users have a secure way of doing things, of building new devices, but they can do it so that their software becomes, so that their software keeps up to date 
and um, and supported for as long as possible. And of course, the Internet of Things covers a huge range of use cases. Um, the Zen of IoT, however, is is really about standalone operations and where a lot of people start making things and, and tinkering with things in that sort of maker space. For us, this is where ARM is no longer uh, just uh, just the thing that we support, but it's really it's really one of our most important things that we uh, that we focus on in the in the Internet of Things space. These logos and boards you can see here really cover 99% of of people getting started in I in, in IoT. Uh, whether that's people getting started for sort of full scale enterprises, or if it's for people doing educational purposes, or if it's people just sort of automating their fridge. Everyone starts here. We are we're working with the Raspberry Pi Foundation, as you can see here on the screen, in particular to make Ubuntu a first class citizen over there, to support their educational mission, to grow their deeper Linux capabilities, and to bring the likes of micro cloud technologies and all the technologies that Alex mentioned before to the Pi and to ARM developers so that anyone can experience and anyone can work with the latest in open source and cloud technology on something as small as a little ARM server. I want to kind of thank you for covering the space. Uh, you know, we went from your, we went from the server, cloud servers, all the way down to IoT. We covered all the different layers that Canonical addresses on the stack. Uh, and how it addresses ARM and how you address ARM while, you know, developing these services and products. I think that that's just amazing. Uh, now I think it's time to talk about some of the projects and dive a little deeper into some of the projects that you are all focused on. And I know that you have some stuff to talk to us around Docker and your long-term supported Ubuntu images. So can we address that? So yes, this is a brand new offering. Uh, it is essentially a growing portfolio of applications. And what we want to do here is we want to reuse our security expertise and specialized infrastructure to build containerized applications with long-term support from us that are progressively available on the most popular mo container marketplaces, such as Docker Hub and Amazon ECR Public. And in the end, as with Ubuntu, we already are building and testing for many architectures, including ARM64, by default. Uh, so this is not something that is really specific to the edge, but the, it's very much relevant to applications at the edge in critical industries such as medical or automotive, where the application lifespan will increase the importance of knowing the provenance of the various components, and also the release cadence and its predictability is really important. And of course, all these Docker containers run perfectly on top of microcades. Uh, I mentioned this before as one of our two Kubernetes distributions, but let me elaborate it a little bit. So microcades is essentially Kubernetes made easy. You don't need to know all the knobs and dials of Kubernetes to start your journey. It has a super simple UX. Everything is just a command away. And if you want to learn more, just find the description below uh, and that's it. All right, very cool. Uh, thank you once again, Alex and Reese, for joining us on the ARM Software Developer Breakdown. Uh, very exciting to hear about Canonical, Ubuntu, all the different offerings and services that you have from the cloud server all the way to the IoT space, the different things that we talked about around Kubernetes and the cool stuff you're doing with Docker. We'll get to see some of this stuff in later videos, so definitely tune in. If you like the video, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the ARM Software Developers YouTube channel, and everything we talked about today will be available in the description below, so don't forget to check that out. Once again, Reese, Alex, thank you very much for joining us, and we'll see you in a later video.